Oh boy, this one's going to be rough. Doughboy is the Famicom debut of Chemco. For sheer quantity of releases, I would call them a second-tier Famicom publisher. But out of the 20 games that they published, there are two that I would consider to be playable. Not good. Playable. The strange thing about Chemco's Famicom games is that all of the cards are the same shade of blue. Though my copy of Doughboy does seem to be showing its age a bit. A lot of what Chemco focuses on are computer ports. And that's where Doughboy started, a Commodore 64 game from Synapse Software. Though even as a Commodore 64 kid, I had never heard of Doughboy before the Famicom version. I'm going to say this up front, Doughboy is a train wreck. The controls don't work, but even if the controls worked, the gameplay is a mess. And even if the gameplay weren't a mess, visually it looks awful. In Doughboy, you're an American commando sent behind enemy lines in World War II to rescue someone from a POW camp. Your mission takes you through five different areas, each with distinctive goals. After thinking about this for a while, I'm going to present this one as a walkthrough of the game. There's so many things wrong in Doughboy, and they're all kind of interconnected. Stage 1, Gather Supplies. You're dropped onto this battlefield, and your goal is to collect items that you'll use throughout the mission. Get to the key in the lower right-hand corner, and then exit off the right-hand side of the screen. Four enemy troops will face you. If you ever wind up killing off all four, then another four spawn in at the far right. The enemies are lethally accurate, and they tend to be fast shooters so it can be pretty tough to make any progress at all. The ideal plan is to kill three of the enemies, leaving the fourth alive, and then run around them until you exit the stage. You can shoot enemies by pressing A. You can also kill enemies by running into them. You and the enemies can climb down into these trenches, but sometimes they just instantly pop out the other side. You can shoot while in the trench, but sometimes it doesn't respond very well. It's important to keep your eye on the prize, though. You have to collect items. On this stage, you collect ladders, a pair of wire clippers, TNT, fuses, and mines. The enemy can pick those up as well, and it is very easy to get into a dead man walking state if you don't collect all the items that you require. Technically, you only need one ladder, so if the enemy grab the other one, you're okay there but there's only one pair of clippers, and without them you can't pass some stages. You also have to have enough TNT and fuses to be able to clear out stages later on. Stage 2. Ford the River. So these spinning towers are lighthouses, and you have to use TNT to blow them up, which knocks them over to create bridges across the river. Touching the river is fatal. You blow up towers by dropping TNT, and then backing away to lead a fuse to it. That sounds simple enough, right? It's on this stage where the controls really start becoming lethal. You plant TNT by pressing and holding the A button until you hear a very faint beep. Then you walk away from it while still holding down the A button to lay out a fuse. If you stop moving, or if you let go of the A button, then you light the fuse. Note that in some spots, Movement is very tight between obstacles and the rivers, so you'll start laying the dynamite, immediately bump into an object, and then the dynamite immediately goes off. There has to be enough room to drop the dynamite. You'll still hear the beep that tells you that you planted the dynamite, but if you haven't left enough vertical room, it doesn't get set on the ground. You work your way around this path, get to the key, and then exit on the right-hand side. On the first loop, there's no enemy soldiers on this stage, there are on later loops, though. Instead, this patrol boat comes up the river. It will shoot when it's horizontal with you, so you'll need to plan your movements around that. Stage 3. Destroy the depot. You start outside what the manual assures me is a chain link fence, and here you have to use the clippers to get through the fence. Press against the fence, and press the B button to use the clippers. You have to do this multiple times before a hole is made. A tank patrols just inside the fence, 
and there's plenty of soldiers as well. There's a lot less cover on this stage too, so it is a lot more dangerous. Your goal is to blow up these barrels until you locate the key. You have to do it with TNT, and if you place it well, you can blow up multiple barrels. Once you find the key under a barrel, you clip the fence at the far end and escape out the right hand side. Stage 4. Scale the wall. There's more soldiers here, and the walls don't actually block bullets. You have to press the B button to put the ladder down in order to scale the wall. But what sometimes happens is you'll press B to drop the ladder, and then you'll release B and you pick it up again. I found that the best thing to do was to not press a direction until you had released the B. On the far side, you can press B again to pick up the ladder. Just cross to the far end of this map to win it. Stage 5, Rescue the POW. This stage takes place in the dark, and what you'll have to do is plant dynamite to flash things for a moment. And I sincerely mean have to. There's one path between the two chain link fences at the start of the stage, and you can't see it without that. It will also reveal the mines that will block any other options. Once you're in the base, then you need to blow up buildings until you locate the key. Avoid this spotlight that's going around too. Soldiers can spawn in here, but not a large quantity unless you're spotted. Once you have the key, go to the prisoner and lead them back to the left hand side of the map. And that's how you clear Doughboy. Doughboy holds the dubious distinction of being Family Computer Magazine's lowest rated game ever, so even in 1985 it was not well received. Yeah, so this game's getting put away and never coming out again. It's bad and not even in a fascinating way. That does make it a good representation of what we're going to be seeing from Chemco in the future.